We're going to be producing a watercolour painting based on a Mediterranean um, street scene. And we're also looking at um, an artist called Ilana Richardson and her work in particular to give us um, some inspiration. So the, these paintings that we're looking at are full of light and what, what we're focusing on is the effects of sunlight and how it produces shadows in our work. So we're going to be working on this composition here. And the first thing that you will need to do will be to draw out your composition onto your watercolour paper. Whether you use cold or hot pressed is up to you. The first thing after doing that is making sure that you wet all your paper first. So we're going to be doing a wet in wet wash. And you're going to be putting yellow ochre around the edges so that it is just blending into the water. You might need to add a bit more water. So let the paint run and bleed. And do that all the way around the edge. using a large brush. So we're really going to have a go at letting the paint do a lot of the work and a lot of the um, wet and wet technique on this piece. The next stage is we're going to start to put in, in the top right hand corner, some crimson flowers, red flowers, that are on a tree. So we're going to just literally dab in crimson red in that top area and let it bleed and run. We're then going to start to add some greens and we're just putting them in as small dashes. And those will be again to suggest foliage and leaves. And because your paper's still wet, it's going to be really sort of easy to let the colours run into one another. So you can strengthen the reds, maybe by adding a darker red and put that into the crimson. So this is more of an Algerian crimson on top of a scarlet. And you can also strengthen the greens as well. And you're literally just dabbing the brush into your areas of wet. So we're going to add some branches to our tree. And we're going to use a dark green for the branches. So I'm going to mix a little bit of Viridian green with some burnt umber. And I'm literally just going to, on the edge here, sketch in the branches and just suggest them. Again, because it's wet still, it, it will bleed. But we're going to go over the top of that as well. So you're just suggesting branches. So the next thing to do is to start to think about the shadows that the tree is causing on the wall. So we're going to 
add mix a really nice blue purple so I'm going to use my ultramarine blue with my Alzerian crimson to make and I'm going to add more blue to make quite a blue purple and I'm literally just going to start to put dabs of it it's a bit dark onto this wall to show the cast shadows. Again, I'm really just using dashes. down onto this side as well. And the next thing I'm going to do is to start to look at features such as the doorway and the steps. And I'm going to be painting, painting those with an ultramarine blue. So very simple, just one colour. And initially keeping it relatively thin and watery. And again, we can go back to this when it is dry to add another glaze so that we have more depth to our steps and shadows. So a smaller brush for this. Use a small medium round. next stage I want you to come in to your two doorways and again using ultramarine blue and just a thin wash I'm going to go over some of the greenery Same for the larger round door here. It's got an archway, arched, arch shape to it. Because it's a slightly larger area, I'm going to use a, a flat square brush and that way I can be a bit quicker. I'm going to have to let some of these areas dry before we revisit them. And if you have got areas that are particularly too strong, you can wet your brush and just lift out 
to take away some of the intensity. Use your tissue and just lift it out as well. I'm going to do that on the red because I think that's a bit, some of that's a bit too intense. So I'm just going to lift out and soften it. Okay, so the next stage I would like you to do on, on this painting is to look at, go revisit back at this area, the foliage and the shadows, and they should be a little bit drier. And I want you to just pick out more specific marks with your brush, again using red, and just sort of making more definite marks on top of your more fluid paint. And the marks you make are just suggesting the, the flowers, so you are literally just changing the direction of your marks to show that. Exactly the same with the green as well. Come in with some slightly stronger paint and suggest more definite shapes for the leaves. We're then going to revisit the shadows that we put in and we're going to strengthen some of those. And we're also going to look at this foreground area here. So the yellow ochre has been a base colour for a lot of this. So I'm just going to move this across here. And what I want you to do is start with this rock area here in the foreground. And again, using a slightly smaller brush, want you to mix up your burnt sienna over the top of your yellow ochre and just start to suggest this rock form in front here to give it a little bit more shape. You can also go for some or umber as well, just to darken it. Again, we can come back to all these areas. We're putting now putting down another glaze over the top, and because the paper is still slightly wet, you're getting some bleeding. That perhaps you want to wait a bit longer to let it dry. So while that's drying, I'm going to go back to the shadows on the edge here, of underneath the tree. I'm just going to strengthen that. You've also got in the foreground here some shadow cast by this, this area. So I'm going to put that down just very sort of carefully across here. Again, using a slightly larger brush. Suggest the shadow in the foreground. I'm also going to add a little bit more shadow underneath the steps. And this just gives a little bit of variation. So I have a sort of dappled effect. Continue the shadow right the way down the step, side of the steps. Look 
gradually making it a little bit smaller as it comes down. Okay, and this area here is going to continue with the shadow coming down from that tree. Suggesting sort of the broken areas of shadow through the trees. That can come further up as well. On this side, there's a small window there, which I'm going to block in in a minute using the ultramarine blue. And these doorways here are going to have some panelling on them so I'm going to put the more thicker sort of darker paint and draw lines coming down to suggest panels and also a shadow at the top and the bottom of the door and also just around here, a little bit more shadow on the tree. This archway here, I'm going to sharpen up. And bring down a little bit more shadow. And again, some panels in a darker blue, just to suggest. And one, another darker line for the edge of the doorway. So you've also got an archway and sort of alcove, which I'm going to put in as a more sort of purple shadow just above the blue door, so that just coming in. That's going to come in and down and fade off as we go further down. Now, we still need to um, approach this area here, which has got the rock and it's, it's like a brickwork. So I'm going to use a burnt sienna and I'm just going to suggest along here some bricks. Possibly coming in a bit darker over the yellow oak that you've originally put down, just make that darker. All of this rock area here is going to be added in a bit more boldly. And I really want this painted to work in layers. So you've got areas that are drying now up here that you can come back to. And just increase the shadow intensity of the steps. nice effect is, is to let the edges as you come out to 
to, to become less strong, to sort of bleed and become much lighter, paler. I'm going to show you a couple that are more finished so that I can just point out a couple more points. So, for instance, on this one, you can see how the tree, I've built up the tones in the foliage, probably gone a bit darker on the edges here and on the steps. So it depends how how dark you like to paint. Obviously, this, this one here is a little bit lighter. It's more finished. So it really depends on your style of working. You might like to work in bolder colours. And I'll show you a couple of examples of slightly bolder paintings. Still the sort of same sort of scenery in Mediterranean, but much bolder and brighter. So that depends on your way of working. Um, this one is, again, the same sort of idea, but much bolder and brighter with the colours. So it depends on your style of working and how you like to work. So take time to pick your image. Um, a good book to look at is this one here, which is by someone called, what's her name? <laughs> Lucy Willis, and it's called Light and Shadows in Watercolour. Really sort of covers a lot of what I've been talking about, but in more detail. So how, when you look at something and you've got the shadows and the sunlight, you need to, have, you've got practical problems and you need to work out where, where you want the eye to go in the painting. So I'll just show you a few of these to, to sort of give you an idea of what the book is like. So definitely give thought to your palette, whether you want it to be bright or whether you would like it to be a more subdued painting. But the main key thing that you're looking at is the light and the shadow and the effects of those on your work. So the again, I'll just repeat the name of the artist is Alana Richardson. This is another one I've done. And really, as I said, give thought prior to the class as to what your subject matter is going to be, what sort of palette you're going to use. Make sure you've got a range of watercolour brushes, small through to a larger one for the initial wash. And also, if you, you may want to use masking fluid as well on some of the areas where it's pure, pure white. Okay, so thank you for watching and I will see you in class.